Understand, you are in contact with the Masorda Air Base. Will they fly gasoline to Maggot? 12 O'Clock High is a television series from 1964 that takes you into the lives of the men of the 918th Bombardment Group of the United States Army Air Forces. This show gives you a look at their brave missions during World War II. It's not just about the battles. It's about the people, their struggles, and their triumphs. You'll find moments that make you laugh, scenes that shock you, and stories that might bring a tear to your eye. Now, I want to ask you something. When you watch 12 O'Clock High, do you remember a time that made you feel proud or a scene that stayed with you long after the episode ended? And what about you? Do you have a memory tied to this series that you hold close to your heart? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Your experiences add to the rich tapestry of this show's history. Keep watching because there's so much more to share. Oh, there he is. Moran, I realize you have a job to do. Turner, George! The television series 12 O'Clock High offers a nostalgic look at the Air Force during World War II, capturing the essence of an era appreciated for its black and white storytelling. The show, which now streams on Amazon Prime, allows viewers to revisit the valor and challenges faced by those in the skies. It stands out among other period pieces for its portrayal of the human spirit and the complexities of war. As someone who grew up watching the series, it holds a special place in my heart, reminiscent of time spent with family. The series' ability to evoke emotion and present thought-provoking storylines makes it more than just entertainment. It's a piece of history that continues to resonate with audiences today. The performances, particularly by actors like Paul Burke, bring depth to the characters and leave a lasting impression. While the show does romanticize aspects of war, its strong scripts and character development offer a compelling view of the era's challenges and triumphs. Watching the series again after many years, one can't help but appreciate the craft that went into creating such a memorable show that has stood the test of time. Bruce Dern, a seasoned actor, has a notable history with the Oscars, having been in four films nominated for Best Picture. His roles span decades, from coming home to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. In the show, inconsistencies are present, such as a character initially said to have lost two brothers in World War II, but later, one brother appears, serving in North Africa. Uniform details also shift, with the lead character's flight jacket undergoing several changes, including the addition of a cigarette pouch and shoulder gussets, reflecting the evolving nature of the series' portrayal of military life. Can the French get up on top? So they say. In the midst of war's chaos, a unique blend of real-life experience and on-screen drama unfolded. Robert Dornan, known for his role as Captain Robert Fowler, brought authenticity to the series with his background as a United States Air Force fighter pilot and member of the California Air National Guard. His later political career as a United States congressman earned him the moniker B-1 Bob, reflecting his staunch support for the B-1 Lancer heavy bomber. Behind the scenes, a significant change occurred when the network hosting the show, ABC, imposed a condition for its renewal, the replacement of actor Robert Lansing. This decision was documented in the 12 o'clock high logbook, shedding light on the off-screen maneuvers that shaped the series' trajectory. Additionally, the series paid attention to historical accuracy, depicting all B-17 bombers in the European theater of operations as equipped with nose guns, with the B-17G models featuring a minimum of two guns in the nose glass area, reflecting the aircraft's actual wartime configuration. Drawing inspiration from the 306th Bomb Group, the show created the 918th Bombardment Group by tripling the original number. The base, named Archbury, is a nod to Alkenbury, the actual base of the 306th during the war. The series took a dramatic turn when Robert Lansing, who played the lead, was written out due to off-screen challenges, and Paul Burke stepped in, having previously appeared in the first season. The show also paid homage to history through Major Harvey Stovall, a character modeled after Colonel William Howard Stovall, a decorated World War I pilot who served again in World War II. 
holding a key position with the 8th Air Force. Forgive me. My commander anxious to receive you now. Forgive. A historical inaccuracy surfaces in the show's second season during an intense moment of military discipline, where the attire of the characters reflects a modern flag instead of the period correct one. Transitioning from the silver screen to television, the series retains key figures from its cinematic predecessor, with two becoming regulars and others appearing intermittently. The narrative evolves as leadership changes within the 918th Bomb Group, reflecting the harsh realities of war. In a twist of fate, the quest for financial backing takes an unexpected turn when potential sponsors are faced with their own past, leading to a swift withdrawal of support. This series weaves together continuity and change, honoring its origins while charting a new course through the trials of wartime leadership and the complexities of sponsorship in the entertainment industry. In the heat of World War II aerial battles, pilots used a clock-based system to report enemy positions. 12 o'clock high signaled a direct threat from the front and above, a call that became synonymous with imminent danger. On the set of the show, the atmosphere mirrored the tension of the series' wartime setting, partly due to the challenging behavior of lead actor Robert Lansing. Known for his strong presence in action dramas, Lansing's career spanned from the stage to the screen, securing his status as a prominent figure in American entertainment during the 1960s. That is. In the show, Joe Gallagher's personal connections are explored, with various family members and friends making appearances. However, Frank Savage's relationships are limited to his military academy days. The casting change from Robert Lansing to Paul Burke was influenced by a shift in the show's airtime to an earlier slot, aiming for a fresher appearance, despite the age difference between the actors. Music plays a significant role, with viewers drawing parallels between the series' theme and that of the original film, attributed to the influence of Lionel Newman, who oversaw the series' music and was related to the film's composer, Alfred Newman. You know what that means, Mellon? Not exactly, sir. Well? In a notable interaction, General Savage is described by his friend as someone who turns every meeting into a significant event, reflecting his intense and commanding nature. Authenticity was a priority for the show, utilizing genuine wartime footage for aerial scenes, with significant contributions from the Memphis Bell documentary. Additionally, a historical bomber was employed for ground sequences to enhance the realism. The series shared musical elements with Star Trek, using similar transitional scores to set the tone for various scenes. This approach to production details highlights the effort to create a realistic and immersive experience for viewers. Well, in a notable departure from reality, the show often depicted crew members without essential gear during high-altitude missions. Real B-17 bombers required the crew to wear heated suits and oxygen masks to survive the extreme cold and low oxygen levels at 20,000 feet, where temperatures could plummet to minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Despite this, characters are frequently seen without oxygen masks or gloves, which would have led to frostbite or worse in actual conditions. Additionally, the series found its way into popular culture, being parodied in Mad Magazine as 12 O'Croc Tie. A unique occurrence in the show was Brigadier General Frank Savage taking the co-pilot's seat during the decision episode, an event not repeated in any other episode. Go ahead. Weather alert, sir. It's Blue Jay for negative over target. Among the notable alumni from New Trier Township High School East is Bruce Dern, who shares this distinction with a host of other prominent figures in the entertainment industry. The show subtly reveals a leadership change within the 918th, with Frank Savage stepping into command, succeeding Keith Davenport. The reasons behind this transition are not disclosed. Adding to the show's legacy, La La Land Records honored its musical score by releasing a comprehensive two-disc set featuring Domini Frontier's compositions, preserving 13 hours of the series' original music for posterity. Hey, it's New Lieutenant. 
Pilots and navigators, Thatcher, how much altitude do we need to get over the altitude? In the realm of military protocol, a colonel typically commands a group, making the appointment of a brigadier general to this position a step down. This discrepancy was overlooked in the original film and scarcely acknowledged in the television adaptation, with only a brief exchange in the first episode hinting at the tension it could create. Casting choices also saw a shift from the initial selection of George Nader to Robert Lansing stepping into the role of the Brigadier General, a change that stirred considerable viewer response, evidenced by the volume of letters received by TV Guide, rivaling the reaction to a national tragedy the previous year. Amid the backdrop of World War II, the series portrayed the intense and challenging lives of the 918th Bombardment Group. However, behind the scenes, the show faced its own battles. The lead actor, Robert Lansing, who played Brigadier General Frank Savage, was unexpectedly replaced after the first season due to disagreements with the producers. This sudden change shocked fans and cast members alike, as Lansing's powerful performance was central to the show's early success. The role was then taken over by Paul Burke, who played Colonel Joe Gallagher, altering the dynamic of the series significantly. But you see, I... I have not yet learned to trust like an American. 